Say, like, Justin, get off the dang phone. Hey, man, I'm ordering steel. <sighs> he ain't ordering steel. He's ordering pizzas. Today's project, I'm gonna show you guys how to start and operate a John Deere B. We got this thing running yesterday. Um, drove it around. Still has a couple of issues we gotta work out. We gotta get the uh, the lights working, uh, which isn't critical, but you know, it'd be cool to have lights. So, this thing's set for six, seven years or something like that. Um, they pulled it in here, and the problem is this float inside the carburetor was messed up. It's cracked. So the fuel fills up and the carburetor comes down through the intake and then f goes to the piston and fills the engine up full of gasoline, which isn't good. So we took the carburetor apart. We got it all, all done, um, then fired it up and drove it. And everything's fine. And I tested it yesterday and the carburetor's still leaking. So anyway, today we're going to show you how to start it. So a couple of rundown procedures. One, on old tractors, you always want to check to make sure everything's good to go so this is your radiator cap you pull your there it is we got some cooling in there antifreeze there that's your go-go juice should have plenty yep a little rust in the bottom of the tank never hurt nobody and to check the oil level these don't have dipsticks on them you actually come over here and take this plug out pull the plug out and you see if you, know, you can look in there and see the oil level um, that's your fill for your oil fill take the cap off start dumping your fill in so now I'll do the I'll, I'll show you what a couple of these things are we'll go through the controls this is a it's like a power not a uh, well, power takeoff I don't know the actual word but you can run a leather belt on this drum to run a, a piece of machine like so most of these things around here have a, a sheave on them where you can actually put a you know a big leather belt to run stuff it's like a sugar cane press over there some of the implements over there so you can either run it off your tractor or you could use a little stationary engine like a hit miss motor this is actually the clutch which is kind of unique so that's the clutch handle you put it all the way back like that that stops that drum from going so you can get it into gear as you go forward releases that clutch it starts to like inside here, it starts to engage. That's your forward, you know, that's your, your clutch engagement. So all the way back, it's disengaged and it uh, stops the machine, the machine from moving. Um, this is your right brake, which just controls this wheel. That's your left brake, controls that wheel. Your shifter, we're in reverse right now to keep it from moving, but one, two, um, like threes over, like one, two, Whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, six gears. I don't think you can shift this one on a fly. I think whenever you you shift, you put it in that gear, throw your clutch forward, and then you're stuck in that gear. And if you want to change gears, you got to stop, pull it out, pull it up, put it in gear, and then re-engage your clutch. So we'll leave it in reverse right now. Um, that's it for those controls. We'll come around. So up here, this is your hand throttle control. And something about that's kind of unique about this tractor is this isn't actually directly linked to the carburetor. So when you pull this, it pulls pull this lever out, pulls that, which pulls that little arm. It puts spring tension. If I can get a good shot of that or not, maybe from the other side. Yeah. So it puts spring tension on the throttle right there, which moves this arm on a governor. That's actually your throttle control. This is the louver control for the front up here. It's really hard to see, but you've got louvers right there. Got that the louver control. I guess it doesn't work. So the louvers are just open. Oh yeah, it's just disconnected. Okay. And I don't think we really need No. So like if you had a really, really cold climate, you know, up north or something, um, that bar is supposed to be connected to those louvers. So right now it's disconnected, which is probably a good thing. 
because it'll cause people to not start and drive it um, with the louver shut all the time. So your hand throttle, your louver control, um, that's for your lights, if your lights worked. This is the actual starter itself. Instead of having an ignition switch, you hit that like that, then it cranks. We actually have it in reverse right now. Release our clutch. That's our choke. You pull that all the way back to choker. And then you have your uh, PTO control. I engage, disengage, you can move. That's it, so we'll crawl on it and we'll get it fired up. Oh, the um, fuel shut off, right there. So when you're sitting up here, to get it started, you pull your choke a little bit, put your foot on a starter switch, run the throttle all the way up, Fires right up. Okay, so to make it move, you put your clutch all the way down here. That stops your transmission from moving. We'll put this over in reverse, like that. You grab your clutch, and you just start engaging your clutch. So you feather your clutch to control speed. Now we got our clutch, we're in reverse, now we're in neutral. So this clutch, you move it all the way back, you'll stop it from running. That's free will in a neutral. As you push it forward, it starts engaging. You'll eventually get to a detent where it'll stay on its own. So right now, we'll select the gear, we'll put it in, Put it in fourth. We're in fourth. you drive a John Deere Model B. Now if you want to change gears, pull your clutch back, that stops the machine from going, select your gear, we'll put it over in first, now we're in first. Going a lot slower. Like I said, I don't think that you can actually shift on the fly. But why would you want to anyway? So that's how you drive the John Deere Model B. So to shut it down, grab your throttle. That'll idle it down. And all you do is you pull your choke. <clears throat> and that kills it. So that's it, and that's all there is to um, operating a John Deere Model B. Uh, the other thing I didn't show you was hitting the brakes. So if you're out road work or road service or whatever, uh, tending your crops and you want to make a real sharp turn, when you hit one of these, that stops this wheel from moving, this other wheel will take off, and you can make a pretty sharp 180-degree turn. But uh, I didn't do it because we were on concrete, 
and it really wears out the tires when you do that so you guys can use your imagination something else on this particular one since we have that fuel related issue um we don't just shut it down and leave it shut down we actually let it run out of fuel so what i'll do is We'll drain our fuel out of our bowl. Now we can leave some fuel in the bowl because we have the door X in there and it'll be all right. But that's it. Pretty easy to operate, pretty easy to run around on. Uh, like I said, there is some, a couple issues we gotta take care of on this. That's how to drive and operate a Model B. I know some of you guys will, uh, will appreciate it. Some of you guys won't, but I think this stuff's cool, you know. Out of all these tractors around here, I mean, I like to know how to operate all of them. And sometimes you don't have access to this stuff. So you're not really able to operate this stuff, you know. So live vicariously through a YouTuber that can. But I appreciate it. If you guys liked the video, uh, throw a comment down below. Hit that like button. Hit the scribble button. And get out and fix something.